I want to show you today some tools that Firefox has to help you make sure that the sites you're building are accessible and make it far easier for you to see, especially around color. Are you using colors that are accessible? Is there something that you could do to make things more usable by more people? So let's take a look at this example. I've just got here some text that I'm underlining. We're going to inspect element and come here and look at this color. And I can see that now inside the color picker, we've got this little extra tool down here, color contrast. And it shows us that this is green text over a white background, which calculates out to a 3.14 ratio in the way that color contrast is being calculated. And that according to the WCAG guidelines, that this in fact meets the double A guidelines. WCAG stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and there's three levels, level A, level double A, and level triple A. Triple A is very, 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 very good. Double A is considered pretty darn good, and frequently sites will set a minimum standard of double A for all of their content and everything about their website. Single A is like, not so great, but at least single A is sort of the minimum. And if you're getting none of those, then uh, it's really, really not accessible. It also depends with color contrast, whether you have large text or small text, because you can use fainter colors and less contract if the text is big. Uh, but once the text gets smaller, then it's especially important for contrast to be stronger. So there's two levels. So this tool in some ways is pretty simple. If you're inspecting some text and the text is over some color, it shows you this. One of the things about our tool that's a little bit different perhaps than some of the others that are out there is that if we change some of what's in the background, it's going to compare multiple things that are in the background, not just one thing. So if there's a gradient or a photograph in the background, for example, it will show you the whole complexity of the situation. Um, we can look at that here by saying, oh, let's make our text dec decoration color, another color like, like green, yellow, and we're going to make it extra thick, uh, text decoration thickness one rem and we'll put uh, an offset on it text underline offset of negative 10 pixels um, and so now our green text is over top of a light green underline it's partly over white and it's partly over green um, so now let's look at our color and you can see that in fact for darker green over white it's 3.14 and we're good to go but the darker green over this lime green is only a 2.56 and that that's really not enough contrast. Um, so maybe I, if we wanted to do this, we decide to go ahead and make this a little darker. And you can see that in fact, now the contrast over the underline is double A and the contrast over the white background is triple A. Let's look now at another tool for color contrast. I'm going to go to, I don't know, the New York times food section. So we have actually a real website with some complexity on it. And I'm going to open up the dev tools and come over here. There's now this accessibility tab. I'm going to click on the accessibility tab and this has to be turned on. This tool is not on all the time because it would make your browser a little slow and we don't want to make anything slow. So you have to actually turn this tool on. And when you're done, you might want to turn it off to make your buzzer fast again. And now I can come in here and I can simulate what it's like to have a different kind of color vision. You might be familiar with these kinds of tests where lots of folks are able to see these numbers and see exactly the difference between orange and green and blue and green and red and green. And, but other folks, when they look at these kinds of drawings, don't see the dot patterns and they don't see the numbers. That's color vision deficiency. And I can see here what that's like. It can simulate this. I can switch from um, these different kinds, low blue, low green, no red. And you can just sort of see, is this working? Is this not working? Over for this example, I could see that if we switch to someone who has kind of no red, low red, that in fact, this green color completely disappears in this line of text. And in fact, that's why we're going to want to have an actual underline and not just rely on color in order to see this link. Otherwise, folks who have low red, no red vision are not going to be able to see this link. We need two ways to show people in many, many situations. One of the accessibility guidelines is to make sure that you have you're not relying on color alone to mark something, but you have some sort of an arrow or you have an underline or you have some other kind of indication that something is something for this reason exactly. But this new simulation tool gives you a chance to kind of see like, okay, well, what's this look like? Well, here, you know, New York Times is doing pretty good. The, the photos look quite different, in fact, but um, 
Otherwise, there's really nothing about this site that's relying on seeing all color in order to be able to understand what's going on. That's pretty good. We can come over here to where it says check for issues and I'm going to test for contrast issues and I'm going to see that in fact there are quite a few contrast issues. So one of them is under the subscribe now button which is way up here at the top and I can see that white over this darker teal color doesn't actually meet WCAG standards for accessible text. Now I think that this is correct, although looking at it with that bold font with my eyeballs, I'm a little bit like, whoa, is, really that doesn't make enough, that's not enough contrast. So maybe um, if I were on this team, I would double check and like maybe this tool, this tool's new, it's still a little bit alpha-y, buggy, whatever, like maybe the tool's wrong, but uh, it gives you a chance to check, to look and see, maybe this is something that could use some more attention. Or here, this is something, and look, once the accessibility tool is on, inspect and accessibility properties appears on this context menu. Um, I can see here that in fact, this is getting flagged, that this text, especially at this little tiny size, this gray color is only 2.85 to one and that this does not meet the WCAG standards. We can come back over here to the inspector and also look at this text. Um, find the color swatch for this text and click on it and see here that, yeah, in fact, it's just not dark enough. There's not enough contrast. So we could darken it up. We can come here and mess around and find exactly a color that's going to work just the right darkness, so that the level of darkness, maybe we throw in a little bit of a blue tone or something to make it work visually look beautiful. One thing I do want to show you about this accessibility tool is that this part may not appear for you on your computer. Why is that? Well, this tool, the Colored Vision Deficiency Simulator tool, is relying on a new thing called Web Render. Web Render is a massive effort inside Firefox to move a lot of the painting and rendering, graphics rendering of web pages in general, not for DevTools, but just always for general, in general, from the CPU to the GPU to move more and more of the process of painting a web page to the graphics engine, which really then taps into operating systems of computers and graphics cards. And if someone has this computer, that computer, Mac PC is in an old PC, a new PC, a new Mac, an old Mac. What's your graphics card? How old is it? How much RAM does it have? Blah, blah, blah. So only some computers, some hardware setups are getting web render at the moment. It's slowly coming to more and more and more and more and more computers. So if you open up your computer and you don't see this tool, it might be because you don't have web render on, on your computer yet. You might be able to turn it on manually. You go to about colon config and you read this little message and you say, yes, this is okay with me. And then you can type in web render where it says web render all true. You can turn this on. If it's not on, then you can turn it on. Um, and then that should trigger this tool and let you see this tool. And if not, then maybe you wait a little longer and then you get the tool later. The accessibility tools are definitely in progress. You know, please forgive give us if they're a little bit buggy or not quite perfect yet. Um, we wanted to ship them though, to get them into your hands as early as possible because they are really useful. And I just showed you how to use this color deficiency simulator and how to use this uh, color contrast issue checker and how to use the color tool in Firefox to quickly double check whether or not you have enough color contrast in the colors that you're choosing for your websites.